All right, so you guys are jumping in with me as I am experimenting a little bit and trying out an idea I had. So this right here is the problem area that you guys saw in the last episode. Um, this is the pin that broke in half. And as you can see, after I, I stopped that video, I was experimenting a little bit and I thought maybe I can get a little bit of a hook around the pin and solder on a wire to it. Maybe that can work. Now, I understand that's you know a pretty janky solution, but my thought process was, well, I just wanna make sure I can test to see if everything works and then uh, I can swap the entire socket, but I kind of wanted to test things first. And honestly, the thought of replacing this entire socket just kills me. It's riveted on, it's the original socket. I'd just rather not do that if I didn't have to. So basically I had an idea and I don't know if this is gonna work or not, but I'm just gonna film it and either you guys will see it or you won't. And I'll kind of determine how successful or not successful or how, um, I guess, relevant I, I deem this for you guys to see. But I bought a couple uh, replacement sockets. And I had the idea that maybe I can just take out one of these pins and swap the pin. So I bought one of these and as you can see, this one is missing a pin. I was successfully off camera able to remove the pin. Uh, I don't know if these pins are gonna fit exactly the same. I don't know if this is the same. I, I bought three different kinds and they're all the same as this one. So uh, yeah, I, there's a lot of things I don't know, but I thought it's just a metal pin. There's not a ton to it here. Basically the tube, uh, the pin of the tube goes in here and then this is what you solder to on the other end. So it's very simple. So in my mind, if I can just swap the pin, there's no reason to swap the entire socket because if it's just a pin that can swap in and out because there's not there's no moving parts to it, it's very simple. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the solder here and then I'm gonna see if I can take out the old uh, broken pin and replace this pin. And if I can't, if none of that works, I do have extra sockets to be able to swap in there if I have to, but I really don't want to do that. So we're going to give this a shot and uh, I'm just going to take you guys along for the ride and we'll see what happens. So first things first, I'm heating up the soldering iron and then uh, we will go ahead and remove this solder and remove that wire. All right, let's go ahead and remove the solder. I'm gonna try and remove as much of this as I can. All right. So now you can see the broken pin there. It's uh, not a whole lot left. I don't know how well you guys can be able to see that. If I flip it over, you'll be able to see more. This is tricky <laughs> doing it, it's all in reverse. Anyways, you can see that's what it is. So now, I'm gonna see if I can push it through so that the uh, pin pops out. I'm gonna try that and see what happens.
shirt. It's a lot of gunk on there, but I did pop it through and I could feel it on the other end. I'm just gonna see if I can grab it. All right, there we go. So there's the old pin. Now I'm gonna see if I can replace that with, there's the old pin, there's the new pin, hopefully. Um, initial view side by side, they are slightly different, but I'm hoping it's not enough to cause any issues. So this one, I don't know about these, but the uh, this one, I'll just see if I can zoom in here. So you can see it's got just a little portion that sticks out there. You can kind of see it there that holds it in place. And I pushed it in more to get it out of the tube socket. So now I'm gonna go ahead and try. So I'm probably gonna pop it out a little bit more because it should push through and then pop out once it gets all the way through. All right, let's see what happens. Okay, so you can see it's see it's popping out there. So it's right here. Just gonna push it all the way through. It's got a little bit more to go. Okay. So now I'm gonna try and push that tab out and then push it down. So the tab is down enough, and it looks like it is. So I'm just pushing out this little sharp point here. And so that just prevents it from uh, going back in. So you can see it's locked in there now. I'm putting pressure on it and it's uh, stuck in place. Okay, so I think that did it. I recognize this is probably an untraditional method. People might have just uh, swapped the entire socket, but I mean, it's it's a pin, right? A pin is a pin is a pin. So um, I don't see why this would cause any issue, assuming the uh, assuming the tube, the preamp tube, slots in fine. So now I'm gonna go ahead and grab a preamp tube and let's make sure that when I uh, push it in that it doesn't have any issues. So I've got a 12AX7. Let's go ahead and see if it fits in fine. Okay, it felt like it fit in fine. I'm just going to look around it. See if you guys can see yourselves. It's got a shield around it, but you can kind of see there that it is slotted all the way in. feels 
mean, it's tight in there. So I don't see why that would be a problem. Try one more time. Okay, uh, I feel pretty good about that. I think that I think that is a good fix. I don't again, I don't see why that would be a problem. I know a lot of people probably just swap the socket, but I just I, I fail to see why that would be bad what I just did. Um, I'm pretty pretty happy with that to be honest. So I am going to go just go ahead and uh, treat that like just another pin, solder the uh, components to it, and I guess uh, that will be this video. So basically, I wasn't sure if this was gonna be part of the video or not because I wasn't sure if this was gonna work, but because it worked, I guess I'll go into the plan for this video. So I've got a bunch of parts I purchased um, to swap on there. I guess I'll just go over kind of my thought process here. So I've got some, I'll zoom out here. So I've got some uh, terminal strips here. So these are three, three pronged. So I realized afterwards that I was kind of stupid when I did this here. Um, instead of, you know, pushing, putting this terminal here, which is soldered here, and then having a ground here and having to stretch these resistors all over here, that made no sense. Instead, I could just put a terminal strip here, ground it here, connect these uh, resistors, these two, to the ground of the terminal strip, and then connect these uh, resistors over to a different um, non-grounded pin on the terminal strip, and everything would be closer and it would just work a lot better. So I'm gonna do that with uh, one of these. Then, uh, I got a couple extra of those, like I mentioned, a couple extra tube sockets just in case. I even got another like shielded one. And then I've got a few resistors, or just a couple I should say, uh, to replace these. I believe they're called uh, metal composite or metal film or something like that resistors. So these are called comp composite. Um, I will be able to see that, but uh, these will be replacing these two different values. I believe off the top of my head, I think it's 47K and 220K, I think. I don't remember, I need to memorize how to read these codes on here, but there's a calculator online that I used. So these will be replacing these two. And then probably the biggest change, I'll zoom out further, uh, are these two F and T capacitors. So as a reminder, this filter cap here is not being used anymore. And so the previous tech installed uh, these two filter capacitors here. Make sure this is in focus for you guys here. So these two filter capacitors and one is an IC branded and the other is a uh, Ruby branded. I don't know the quality of them. I don't know how old they are. I don't know anything about them. So I just thought the parts are so cheap. I mean, they're like just a couple dollars, a few dollars. These are F and T's, which are supposed to be really the best. So I got two 500 volt, 22 microfarad um, capacitors to replace these two. So that will be taking place in this video as well. And then I also got another small terminal strip. These are just two prong and that will be to replace this here. If I decide to, um, this one works and it's fine, but it's kind of chipped and old. So I just got replacements in case I wanted to swap those out. But other than that, uh, everything else is kind of good to go, I think. Uh, one other thing, so I've got the, the new uh, speaker cable wires here. I can't remember if I included that in the last video or not. 
And then this does have the death capacitor still attached. So uh, I will remove that. That was original to the amp and does kind of bulging and just looks like it's seen better days and you don't need this anymore. Uh, so since this was uh, already modded to be three prong, uh, I'm going to go ahead and remove this capacitor. I think that covers it. Uh, I'm probably gonna go ahead and hit every single joint with new solder. Um, but in general, the biggest things are just fixing this, which is now done. And then I can reattach everything, swap these components, swap those, and then we'll be able to go ahead and plug the amp in and test it. So, all right, I'm really happy that worked. <laughs> I wasn't sure if it would or not. Or not so, uh, sweet. I'm going to go to bed because it's really late and uh, we'll pick up a different day. All right, so it's a new day and we're going to go ahead and try and tackle the remaining um, projects left before we can complete this amp. So really the main focus for me right now is going to be this area here. So we've got that new pin installed. That's all great. But um, there's a lot of, of work here and things to address. And basically what I'm thinking is I'm just going to basically redo most of what I've done over here. So let's go ahead and remove these resistors. Refocus it here. I'm curious if uh, you guys enjoy kind of seeing me, uh, you know, show every single piece of this process of me actually doing the work. One thing I've noticed as I've been, you know, watching other channels that do amp work is they really never show the work, right? They show the, they talk about, okay, this is what I'm going to do. And they explain it. And then they cut to the job done. So they don't actually show them doing it. They just say, this is what I'm going to do. And then all of a sudden it's done. Um, I don't particularly find that helpful because I don't get to see how they do it. Obviously I'm not an expert, so what you guys are witnessing is not an expert doing, you know, the best job ever. But I'm just kind of curious if you guys prefer it this way or if you guys actually like seeing it done. And um, and by that I mean, okay, the job is done. Here's the result versus longer videos showing me actually, you know, struggling to do the job like I am right now. So go ahead and comment below. Let me know what you think. So I'm trying to get this wire out. There we go. So let's go ahead and remove this one as well. Just bend that out of the way for right now. So I'm not sure if this one is wrapped around or not, but we'll find out here in a second. came right off. Cool. And you know what, while I'm at it, I'm going to take this off because that needs to be redone. Yeah, I don't know what's going on there. That looks awful. I'll zoom in a little bit. Actually, might be a wire. Yeah, it's a wire. All right, I want to be really careful not to break this pin too. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and pull out this guy. So let's go ahead and try our cutter, see if these new cutters do better. This is tricky because the camera is kind of where I need to be. I'm gonna use my left hand here. Oh, 
let's just see if I can let's just see if I can cut it without even using the soldering iron. I can already see that pin is all twisted. There we go. All right. Oof, okay. Well, that just broke off. It's not that big of a deal because it was already too long anyways. I kind of want to shorten that. So I need to remember the orientation it went. I'm not sure if it matters on this or not, but I'm just basically undoing everything on the amp. <laughs> it's a pretty ball of solder there. So I've got the beast heating up right now. We'll come back once that's ready to go and then we'll take this joint off, at least enough to lift this. I'm, I'm gonna leave solder there to just keep the pins down because I want that to stay solid, but uh, yeah. So my goal is basically just to heat this up and then uh, use this to pull this up and off. So we'll see how well that goes. Okay. So that came off fairly easily. I don't know how this is going to work, but I don't really need the solder here anymore, so I'm going to try and suck some of it up, maybe. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to lift these components up, and then I don't think I'm gonna put the terminal post here. I think I'm gonna put it on a fresh place to where it's not, uh, not, I might, I think I might put it here where there's, you know, I don't have to deal with, I can kind of sand it down a little bit, make it really good ground connection and not really worry about, because my fear basically, if I were to uh, attach the, ground the terminal strip to the post here or a solder connecting to that so that if the this uh, can cap that that's connected to at the bottom here if that gets banged or knocked that's just gonna put stress on the solder joint and potentially break it from the chassis so i want it to be completely separate from that so that there's nothing that'll that's not tied to it that could get moved and potentially damage it so i think i'm going to put it here or here and I'll clean that up, but let's go ahead and get these components off first. Let's move that out of the way, then this one. I'm just gonna try and solder this down a little bit further. Make it look a little bit more pleasing like that. So 
So now it's just kind of covering over the post. They both are, so it doesn't look terrible. I'll clean up all of this uh, junk later. But now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean up an area. Let me get a, one of these terminal strips out. So I'm gonna put this either here and have these connected there to the middle lug, or I might do it like here. So let me think of how these wires gotta connect. So now it's gotta be like this. I'm trying to think of what'll look the most aesthetically pleasing. Can I be able to solder there though? I might have to do it here. Yeah, I might have to do it there. I know like the best way to do it obviously is to have it screw screwed in somewhere, but I don't want to drill a hole into this. I don't, I mean, maybe I do this and I get comments saying I'm doing this wrong, which is very possible. But again, it just seems like foolish to me to connect the terminal strip to one of these pins here. And then if, the can cap gets banged or something that could move, lift it up off the chassis. And then I'm kind of back to square one. If it's completely separate, I just have a really solid connection to ground. So I like sand it down, um, have it just bare metal to bare metal, connect that on there. I think that should be fine. And actually I could move this wire to it as well here and then connect this there and have that, this little guy. So it could go from there, from here to here. And this wire, this wire here, go to here instead of here. So that this isn't necessary for these both to be on there. I mean, I could even just remove this terminal strip completely. No, I couldn't. All right, I need to think about this some more and then I'll, uh, you guys will join me <laughs> when I'm about to do something. All right, so I've got some sandpaper here and I'm gonna do it here. So I, I'm just gonna kind of rough up that area and clean it up a little bit. thing in the world, but the sample is never going to win any beauty contest anyways. Then I'm gonna go ahead and scratch it up a little bit. So my goal is just to kind of create a really good surface for soldering. give plenty for the solder to catch on to here. So get some various tools and just kind of scratch it up. All 
right, that should be good, I think. And then last but not least, Zippo lighter fluid. I use this to clean stuff all the time. So that just should clean out all of the uh, remaining oils and stuff here. So I think my goal really is just to get a big blob of solder on there first, and then I will add this on there. And actually, I'm gonna go ahead and sand uh, the bottom of this as well. This is where I get a little nervous, to be honest. This thing is a little scary. By a little, I mean very scary. Now that that is there, let me zoom in a little bit. That kind of will lay the groundwork for this to be there. So this is gonna be tricky. Basically I wanna heat it up and get this just to be right there. More or less, I just want to kind of plop that down there while that's hot. So let's see how this goes. Okay, so now I just wanted to get it positioned. And then what I'm gonna do is use a helping hand to hold it in place while I add in more solder. Because I don't wanna be moving it while it's cooling. So this will allow me to not have to touch it. Okay, so we'll see how well this works. I've got the arm position. I'm gonna try and hit solder on it from the back while hitting the front with the iron itself. Okay, I think that actually went pretty well. Uh, yeah, that looks good to me. Chassis is quite hot. Just about covered the area I, I sanded. So that's perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and lift this up now. Actually, I'm gonna let it cool for a second. And then hopefully you guys will deem I did a good job. <laughs> hopefully I didn't mess it up too much. All right. So get the helping hands out of the way. I'm gonna flip this around so you guys can see it. Oh, 
All right, so there you can see it, hopefully. Might be a little too bright. Let me make it a little darker. It looks pretty solid to me. Get a little bit of a better view. All right, well, I'm pretty happy with that. So we're gonna go ahead and connect everything to it, assuming that worked properly. And uh, yeah, I think it'll be good. Now, before I connect anything to it, I figure I'll just use the continuity tester on my uh, multimeter here, excuse me, to see if it worked. So we want this to beep if I touch the chassis it does. I'm going to touch some other grounds. Um, so we'll go ahead and touch something over here. Okay, so it seems like it's, uh, it's a good ground. It's not going to go anywhere. There's nothing stressing it. So if I move the can cap around, it's not going to affect this, which was really the biggest reason why I didn't want to connect it here. But instead, give it its own connection there. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. So now we can go ahead and start reconnecting things to this. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is disconnect this wire here. I'm going to connect it to this one. And then I'm going to connect this little guy right there. So that those are both connected here just like they were. So instead of using this terminal strip, I'm going to use this one. And um, so Let's go ahead and do that. So now I can shorten this wire pretty considerably because I don't need it to be anywhere near as long. So I am doing, just to show what I am doing here, I'm doing a small hook, but not completely around. And in a way that if I were to heat this solder up and just pulled it forward, it would pop right out, but otherwise it'll stay in. So that's kind of the way I'm doing these things here. I might even shorten it more.
All right, so now that that's done, I can go ahead and connect these grounds over here. But first, before I do that, I'm gonna undo all of this junk here because it's just a it's just a mess. Hopefully this isn't too hard to do. But yeah, I mean, this is like, I can rotate it. It's so bad. I can see there's a hole in the solder joint there. So let's go ahead and clean that up. I'm a little afraid that this is going to break this pin as well. But this has to be cleaned up, it's so bad. This must be extra wire then. Let's try and clean that up. All right, I'm gonna let that cool down for a second because that's super hot. But yeah, I can see there's like four or five extra wires coming out of there. I don't know if you guys will see that or not. It's hard to tell what I'm cutting exactly. So that's why I'm hesitant to cut. Can't tell if this is part of that or this. It's kind of a, on your guys' end, you won't be able to see much, but it's like two or three wires wrapped around each other here. Try and heat it up one more time and just move this one around, see if I can see where, which one is what. Okay, so I think I can see that this is not part of anything. Let's see if I can cut that out. There we go.
Okay, so we're getting that all cleaned off. So again, these will go to this middle post here. This one as well. Just gonna remember the, I think it was this way. Go through my photos and remind myself. So that's gotta go here. And here. Basically right there. I think I'm gonna have it be pretty low like that, pretty low profile. So I think I will keep it longer than I maybe normally would just cause I want it low. Cause then I have the two uh, carbon comp resistors go into this. And I think I'd rather have those above than this above. So I think I'll do it like that. But even still, I can go shorter.
So now, gotta connect these carbon comp resistors. And then I've gotta connect this rewire, this wire to reach here. So that'll be just out of the way for right now. This wire right here, which is going off the middle lug of the volume pot. So this wire needs to connect to pin seven, which is the one right here that we had to re, the new pin we had to attach. So pin seven was the one we lost. I think I have that right. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yeah. So pin seven, that's just this guy to attach to it. So I can cut this wire shorter as well. Although I, I might run it, how do I wanna do this? All right, so now we need to connect this carbon comp resistor. It's gonna go to pin one here, um, just like this little cap here. So it's gonna go to pin one, and then it's gonna go to this terminal here. So I'm thinking I'm gonna set it like that so it's lifted up a little bit over everything. And uh, yeah, so we'll give that a shot. So I'm just trying to bend the legs to go the way I want to. Go and put this little covering on it. It's basically I'm thinking like that. We've got a little L on the end of it here. All right, let's give it a shot. I don't really like how that joint came out. It's hard to see. So I will redo that, but for right now, just to get it attached, that'll work. So 
That's basically what I'm thinking is that. So now we'll get the other one out. All right, so same sort of deal. This one is a 47K. And this goes to pin six, which is right here. That's right, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yep, so that's gonna go there. Let's pin six in here.
All right, I am pretty happy with that. So now I'm gonna go ahead and get my multimeter out, do just checks to make sure everything is connected okay. And then I'm gonna call it a night. So let's go do that real quick. Okay. I think we're just about there. So to recap, what is left? So I've got to get a new or make a new longer wire here to connect this to this, where I just put in these new resistors. And then I've got to swap the capacitors here just out of frame. So this and this. Swap those with the new F and T's I got. And then remove the death cap just out of frame again. So this right here would be the death cap. So uh, I need to go ahead and remove that. And then that should be it. Um, there's lots of really poor soldering elsewhere. So I'm probably going to hit all of these again. Um, all of the ones I haven't already touched and just make sure those are nice. But overall, a pretty productive video, pretty productive couple of days. So probably call it quits there and then uh, pick up a different day. All right. So it's the next morning and looking over the work I did last night, I'm pretty happy with how it came out. I think everything looks good and solid. All the connections seem really good. I'm, I'm happy with the way it looks with the resistors kind of up and out of the way. Everything is compact in this area. There's a lot going on, but uh, the circuit's a little crazy here anyways. So overall, I'm really happy with that. And the last thing I need to do to complete everything here and check that off the list is redo this wire. This is supposed to go over here. So um, this is connecting to this pin, which is, uh, that would be pin four, I believe, on the power tube. So I'm gonna undo this wire. I've got a longer replacement here, and let's go ahead and knock that off the list. All right, I don't love that. It's not perfect by any means, but uh, there's a lot of components hooking up to that. So, so now this is gonna go here. I think I'm gonna run it under everything like I did before.
Okay. That looks solid to me. So I can go ahead and zoom in a little bit for you guys. Okay. 